What's up guys, Hong Nguyen, OG Fitness, welcome to the channel. So today we're gonna talk about um, Koshiguruma and Osoto. So this is a question from our friend KD. Let me just grab my phone and uh, read it to you guys. Uh, hello, sir. Firstly, I want to ask you a few questions about Koshi Guruma. Uh, namely, one, uh, do you think that performing this technique in a way where you hold your uki's neck is safe? Uh, I'm gonna post a video. I'm gonna get my editor to put a video of Koshi Guruma here so that you guys could see what it's uh, what it looks like. It's essentially a arm, head and arm uh, throw. Okay, that's what it's called in wrestling. It looks kind of like a headlock, and then you you know pass your hips through, and then you, you throw the guy. So, uke, by the way, um, for those of you guys who don't know, uke is the one that's being thrown. Okay, in judo. So, let me just answer the first one because this is actually a three-part question. So I'm gonna answer each one separately so that you know we can. Uh, I don't have to go back and I don't forget uh, my train of thought because <laughs> I don't script this guys like I kind of think about it and then I just do the videos and some people complain that I go off on tangents but uh, that's just me and hey sometimes I do sometimes I don't and if you don't like it you don't like it <laughs> okay so back to what I was saying um, do you think that performing this technique in a way where you hold your uki's neck is safe no, I don't think it's safe. And the reason why is because if you're not uh, holding on to the shoulder or the gi, usually like if the arm is coming across this way, the hand is gonna be holding here on the shoulder or on the gi, right? So if you're just wrapping the arm around the head slash neck and you're twisting, you're rotating, you definitely, you're, you're essentially cranking the guy's neck and twisting it at the same time, like cranking and twisting depending on your angle as you come down. So I think it's it's definitely dangerous for the UK. So unless you want to purposely hurt somebody because maybe it's a self-defense um, thingy going on and, and you're fighting for your life kind of thing and you know, and you want to do like maximum damage, then okay, that's one thing. But keep in mind, you know, like if you break someone's neck and they die, then kind of go to jail <laughs> right that's just my my uh, it depends on laws and circumstances and all that and you're gonna have to get lawyers involved and you know hopefully they could um, uh, you know like get you out of it but uh, you know if you kill somebody chances are you're going to jail so anyways uh, I wouldn't do that it's not safe for the neck okay now on to the second part of the question and whether is it safe when you do it in a proper way, keeping your arm behind your uke's neck, holding a grip on his gi? So um, I already explained that. And yeah, if you do do it the correct way, oh, let me just go back on the first question. If you just hold the neck, danger too, if it's another judoka, like, or somebody who's able to um, kind of see it coming, they could potentially pull their head out. Right, so if they pull their head out, then you're gonna miss the throw and you're just gonna land uh, uh, forward. You know, you're gonna fall forward and then if it's in a street fighting scenario, well, you know, you being on the floor in front of the guy, right, in a, in a more or less turtle position, all, all fours, then uh, it's bad. Uh, if it's in class, then, well, even though the guy pulled his head out, it's not gonna feel good, he's not gonna be happy about it, it's gonna rub on his ears for sure, and it's kind of a dick move, to be honest, if you're doing it in class, so I wouldn't do that. Okay, so let's get back to uh, the second question. Um, the second part is uh, if it's safe doing it the right way. Yes, a lot, lot safer, and you have a lot more control. So the throw is gonna go through, right? Um, and then, there's a little parenthesis here. Some say that pressure on the neck may be somehow dangerous in both cases. In both cases, I mean, the first one I believe is more dangerous, okay? But the second one, doing it the right way, uh, it's less dangerous, uh, you know, because you have the person's shoulder here, like you're holding onto their shoulder and it's a little bit hard for me to explain without actually showing you guys. 
but like they're they're properly like their arm is here like this is my arm it's around their head and they're and i'm grabbing onto the shoulder like if there was a shoulder here and their head is like here and their arm is here so it's they're more cradled up properly so yeah of course it always depends on how they land and like their neck if you know um if they have enough muscles in their neck and they're tensed enough to like absorb that shock so to speak you know there's danger there but for the most part it should be okay uh if you do it the proper way okay um now on to third question the third part of the question so another thing i want to ask about is when i got thrown on my back osoto gary for example so i'm gonna post a, a little video clip of that too when the power is decent i tend to lose my breath and uh, struggling to breathe <clears throat> that's that's normal now the reason why that's normal is because osoto gary is a it's it's I would consider it, whoops, my phone is falling there. It's a horrible, horrible throw in the sense that like if you're on the receiving end of it, oh my God, it's, it's, uh, you're, you know, even if you land properly, like on the side, you know, and you got your, your, your chin tucked in, you're still going to feel it. Okay. Now if you land incorrect, uh, not, I wouldn't say incorrectly, but if your uh, partner wasn't nice enough to hold you back, hold one of your sleeves so that one of your shoulder uh is off the um uh one of your shoulder doesn't uh touch the ground okay and like man if he if he's if he's nice enough to do that he's holding that shoulder and only one shoulder touches the ground it's still gonna suck but it's gonna suck less now if both shoulders hit like the ground at the same time which is uh, a big possibility sometimes in the heat of the moment like your your uh, your partner might not be able to hold you back in time and you just land flat on your back and then yeah that's you know there's no way around that you're gonna get the wind knocked out of you and it's gonna be hard to breathe okay so um so i'm just gonna continue the question here does it mean i have to adapt to it and through practice it will stop or i'm falling in a wrong way or my opponent performs the the throw inappropriately um i wouldn't say that they you know so i think i i answered uh for the most part that question now, can you perform the furrow inappropriately? I wouldn't say, yes, you can. Like if you, so, sometimes it happens in the heat of the moment, it's very hard to control how your partner's gonna land. But if they're able to control it and you know, like they're a higher level than you and they purposely slam you uh, really, really hard on both shoulders. Yeah, like uh, they're, they're essentially being a douche about it. So I wouldn't train with that guy anymore, to be honest. I'm gonna make a video on that because I recently had an incident happen to me and I gotta take this whole week off because my neck is essentially completely messed up. Uh, I'm gonna go to the doctor tomorrow to check it out, but that's that. Okay, so thank you for your work. Your channel is awesome, KD. So thank you for the question, KD. I hope I answered your question. I, I did that to my, the best of my abilities. Um, and um, yeah, so let's just reiterate a little bit here. If you do Koshiguruma, and this is just my opinion, guys. I'm not an expert, uh, brown belt, right? Been doing judo for six years. Six years sounds like a long time, but it's really not. If, if I were to compare myself with guys who, uh, well, you know, there's levels to the game, you know, there's national level, there's this, then there's Olympic level and all that. But I don't really consider myself a, uh, an expert at all. You know, I'm just a 42 year old guy on his journey to win a world title and uh, sharing with you guys my journey and what I'm about. Um, yeah, so anyways, to go back to what I was saying, if you just grab the neck, the guy could escape. And if you crank it and you twist it, well, you're gonna bust the guy's neck. So I wouldn't do that uh, to your partners in training. Um, if you do it the right way, which is you, you, know, you have your arm around the guy's head slash neck, and then you hold onto the shoulder and the gi, it's gonna be much better. Of course, there's in both cases, uh, the risk, there's always a risk of, uh, you know, putting pressure on the neck, so to speak. The first one is horrible. Like you're right off the gate. You know, the second one, if you do it the right way, it's on the landing. That's where the pressure is gonna be on the neck, you know, because he might get like whiplash or whatever, but it's properly cradled for the most part. So it should be okay, right, from my experience. And the first one, oh man, you're, you're, you're doing it right off the bat. You're like just twisting and cranking his neck. So ee, yeah, that's not a good thing, man. Um, and then for the Osoto, okay. Uh, 
getting used to it. There's not really any getting used to it. Like you get used to falling and all that, but I mean, if somebody uh, executes an Osoto on you and you, you weren't kind of expecting it or you didn't see it coming and you know, yeah, it's gonna suck. It sucks less if they hold you back a little bit. So only one shoulder touches the floor. Um, touches the floor, right? And, but, <laughs> but the second one, if, if both shoulders touch the floor, ouch. Okay, that's gonna cut the wind out of you and it's kind of dangerous because it, it could like snap your head back. Okay, and you can, you can get concussed. Mm, and does is your partner doing it inappropriately man i don't know it's very uh you know like it, it's a possibility it's a possibility um you know some people don't have control so th that kind of sucks and i'm gonna make a video on that like i said um but uh yeah it's a possibility and if you're not sure about it i would caution you i would I would go on a safe route and just not, you know, um, like if, if it's one time, okay, fine. But if he's doing this, like if it's a regular thing, you know, like he, he's done this more than once, then you might not want to go with that guy. I would even suggest you avoid that bastard because you don't want to get concussed and you know, there's no need for that. Honestly, like especially when you're just you're you're training because training is for skill development, right? You're you're doing randori, you're fighting to get better. You're not you're not there to get uh, 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 smashed to bits and get injured and all that. So if you have a douchebag that's doing that, stop, like going with him. It's as simple as that. Or if you guys are just practicing frozen, he's doing that. Well, stop right away, man. I'm telling you, like the right way to do things sometimes is to to to. Just because you're in a dojo doesn't mean that you have to do whatever it is that you know um, uh, that that's that's uh, that you're told to do, so to speak, right? Like if there's something dangerous and you feel like eh, you're not comfortable with it, you gotta you gotta take care of yourself. Like I think that you have to you know because the coach doesn't know sometimes, or even if the coach and if the, the coach does know and he doesn't care, well I mean. Man, you gotta, you know, you, you talk to him, you tell him, hey man, listen, <laughs> uh, I don't want to uh, go with that guy because, you know, he's throwing me like super hard and I'm, you know, not enjoying it or whatever. So anyways, that's for another video, guys. I hope that was uh, helpful, KD. And hey, what do you guys think? Put down in the comments below. Uh, of course, like, subscribe to the channel, comment, uh, sharing. Sharing is caring. Sharing actually makes the video, uh, makes the channel grow faster. And guys, if you're interested in hiring me for coaching, we could talk about that. All the links are gonna be below. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.